Stay with me as I take you to the New Hampshire Renaissance Festival located in Kingston, New Hampshire. Since I was a little kid, I was obsessed with going to the Renaissance Festival. Here I am from 1983, all dressed up and ready to go. I've only ever been to the really large Renaissance Festivals, like the one in Maryland here and the one in Atlanta. These are some shots from the early 90s where I was at the one in Baltimore. So I wasn't sure what to expect by going to a smaller one like the New Hampshire Renaissance Fair. It only occurs just two weekends of the year, so there's no permanent structures everywhere like most Renaissance festivals. I decided to find out more by asking someone who's been there before. My name is Susie Chelberg and I'm from Tamworth, New Hampshire. And uh, what do you think of the Renaissance Festival? I love this one. I have been going to Renaissance Fair since I was 14 years old, so most of my life. And this is a small fair. It's compact, but it's awesome. It's really well done. It's a lot of fun. And without a whole lot of effort, you get transferred back to a whole other time. And it's a great way to spend a day, or two, or three, or four. <laughs> What's really interesting about this festival is that the profits all go to charity. The profits went to New Hampshire Food Bank and Rockingham Meals on Wheels. We had a metal sword with rust all over it. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure if I had my shots. The first thing I found was the horseback skills demonstration that later led up to jousting. Here they practice attacking this styrofoam pig with a javelin. <laughs> Unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to stick around late enough to see the real jousting, but I hear it's quite good. The good news is there's so much more to see than just the jousting. I especially enjoyed this lady. <laughs> if you guys are enjoying our animals, tip the tortoise! And don't tip it over! I have to give this lady a gold star because this is the most creative way I've ever seen to get tips. I loved this tortoise. He was so cool. So I just kept spending time filming him. He's hard to get away from. I especially like how he could care less that people were around him and all this activity was happening. He just wanted to really eat this grass. <laughs> there were all kinds of cool animals there to pet. Eventually, we found our way over to the pirate demonstration where they were firing off black powder weapons. 75 caliber blunderbuss, rolling fire! Fire in the hole! In the pirate section, there were lots of fun activities, including cannonball bowling, and of course you could buy some toy swag. Also, someone was branding people with the letter P for pirate. Do you want a double one so you can say you got pee peed on? No, no, I'll stick with People were also taking precautions to not catch the Black Plague. Some people took great care to lay out their campsites. Others were just standard vending tents, and they were all over the place. As with most Renaissance festivals, the vendors are just as interesting as the events. These are definitely things you see sold that you really can't find anywhere else. Most of the vendors at a Renaissance festival handcraft their own stuff and they're skilled artisans. Others blend their own spices or make their own parasols. There's all kinds of different things you can find there that are pretty unusual. I mean, really, where else can you find handmade dragons that you can hang on your wall right next to puppets? There was also a lot of clothing vendors, so if you didn't bring an outfit, you could buy one. 
you can also watch a lot of craftsmen. People like blacksmiths, armorsmiths, weaponsmiths, and people who make leather. You can even purchase your own suit of armor and weapons right at the festival. Are you looking for a helmet with cat ears? Well, they got you covered. Or how about a crossbow? They got that too. Of course, you might want to start with just learning how to use a regular bow. They have archery classes, so you can learn how to shoot an arrow properly too. There was also some pretty creative costumes about, like this giant here who had a foam sword, so I guess he was either here for LARPing or dagger here or fighting with foam weapons, but he was huge. It was a really neat costume. I eventually stumbled across one of the charities and talked to them. So how long have you guys been associated with the Renaissance Festival and how did that happen? I think it was four or five years and we just saw that it was happening and we said we would love to be a charity and we appreciate it. We're local in the area and they said come on down and it's been a great, a great help to us. And what's your little wheel of fortune here? We kind of spin it and you end up on a question and you win a prize. Uh, yeah, we are on castles. Castles. You want to try it? <laughs> All right. What's our question? You want an easy one? Uh, yeah. All right. <laughs> Why did kings and lords build castles living during the Middle Ages? To stay warm and keep the snow out? To protect themselves and their people when attacked because they thought they looked cool? I like three. <laughs> Actually, it's to protect themselves. <laughs> oh, she no. won anyway. Everybody's a winner. Oh, I'm a winner anyway. The, the Everybody fair. gets a trophy. Everybody, yes. Everybody's a winner for Meals on Wheels in the fair. All right, thank you guys. Thank you very much. Awesome. Appreciate it. There was lots of food there, but I eventually settled for falafels, and they were awesome. They also had some live fighting demonstrations with fencing and with broadswords. Because he has the most expensive gear. You shot my hand. I'm not dead. Oh, oh good. Nice. Yeah. I think I know him. Oh, oh. oh. A man of the blue could do that. Oh, double thrust. There were also games of skill you could try. And if you really felt daring, you could join the belly dancing class and learn how to shake your stuff. You could also stain your body with the ancient art of henna some pretty cool stuff if you have a friend with you who's shy sometimes it's a lot of fun to hire the attack wenches to make them nice and uncomfortable yes it's like when you go to a restaurant on your birthday except far more aggressive yes <laughs> Far, far more aggressive. Yeah. <laughs> Wenches are just kind of aggressive by nature. <laughs> there was also live music everywhere. In fact, if you really want to hear these guys play the largest dulcimer I've ever seen, just click this little icon in the right corner that's appearing now, and it'll take you to a full story about them. There were also roaming harpists. Very cool. The festival was a lot bigger than I expected, with multiple fairways everywhere. And of course, what festival would be complete without a storyteller? And someone weaving, as well as a pottery demonstration. And of course, this guy. How the hell you find pants like that? Uh, Amazon. <laughs> It's, it's is it to think a unicorn fighting? It's a unicorn fighting a, a mechanized a mechanized T-Rex. <laughs> yeah. Fucking awesome. Thank you. <laughs> all in all, this was a really fun festival. If you get a chance, you should go. Don't forget, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe to my channel. Also, give this a thumbs up, a like, a share, or if you have something to add, remember to comment below. Thanks. Also, don't forget to stop by terranlupo.com. I have up videos that you can't see anywhere else. 
Currently, I have one on carnivorous plants and also how to make your own mead. All you have to do is go over